Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the regular meeting of the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners this 29th day of June. Uh, Chairman Martin and Commissioner McDaniel are particip participating remotely for today's meeting. We will begin our meeting with a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led today by Commissioner Plyler. Let's all stand please and have a moment of silence. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Citizens who are interested in participating in the public session portion of the meeting today, please call 336 422-1200. You will be placed on hold until the public session begins. Members of the audience who are interested in participating in the public session today, please fill out a speaker card and return it to our clerk. And I will repeat the number one more time in case you wanted to call in 336-422-1200. Uh, commissioners, the first item on the agenda today is a resolution approving the jail health medical plan at the Forsyth County Law Enforcement Detention Center. Do I have a motion? So moved. Have a motion by Commissioner Plyler? Second. Second by Commissioner Bessie. Is there a discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 You're, mute. You're muted, Dr. Martin. You're still muted. Could that be on our side? Oh. I think I heard something. Chip. Madam Vice Chair, if, if the chairman can't, um, or, or we, or whoever it is, can't fix the audio, he could certainly just raise his hand to vote. Okay, could you raise your hand, Dr. Martin, if you're in favor? Yes. Uh, Commissioner McDaniel? Madam Clark, is she on? Uh, Vice Chair, she is on, she is muted. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, that's a unanimous vote, thank you so much. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a resolution adopting an amend, amended policy regarding settlement of certain ne uh, negligent and tort claims against Forsyth County in limited circumstances. Do I have a motion? We have approval. Approved by Commissioner Plyler. Second. Second by Commissioner Limville. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay, that is a unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Commissioner uh, Mc, uh, McDaniel and you, you saw that. Okay, they both said aye. <laughs> um, Madam Clerk, do we have cards or a call for the public session? Hmm. Oh, did I miss one? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, group. The next uh, agenda item is approval of minutes for the me meeting of June 5th, June 8th, and June 15th. Move approval. Second. Have an uh, approval by Commissioner Plyler and a second by Commissioner Bessie. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Now, Madam Clerk, <laughs> do we have cards or a call? No, ma'am, we do not. Okay, that's great. 
Um, Mr. Manager, I'm going to turn the meeting over to you now. All right. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon, board members and staff and guests. We do have some business items for consideration this afternoon. We have reviewed these in briefing sessions and hopefully have answered all your questions uh, as we dive into it. So I will um, jump into it. We have three budget and finance items. Uh, item five is an amendment to the fiscal year 2022-2023 fire tax district special revenue fund and budget ordinance that appropriates additional sales tax proceeds. And so what this is, is this recognizes additional revenue that we have received or expect to receive as we close out year end. It increases the, the entire fund by $163,000, and it affects the 25 fire tax service districts and the overlay district. Move approval. Approval by Commissioner Plyler. There is second. Second. Second by Commissioner Linville. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, that's a unanimous vote. All right, thank you. Agenda item six is an amendment to the 2016 Schools Capital Projects Ordinance. Uh, it is for the Philo Hill Middle School Project, and it, in, it, um, it provides um, kind of new funding or funding that's been moved around around $28,194,038. It increases the total project cost of $43,383,345. And so um, there's been a number of questions about that. Don't know if all the questions have gotten resolved, but Daryl Walker is here if you've got any further questions on that. Move approval. Uh, approval by Commissioner Plyler. I'll second for the purpose of discussion, but I do have a question for Mr. Walker. Uh, second by Commissioner Bessie. Discussion. Um, Mr. Walker, as you're, as you're coming up, the only question that I haven't been able to get answered following conversation with one of the board members um, uh, is the confirmation, uh, has the East Ion Elementary addition and partial renovation project been completed? Yes, sir. Thank you. You will notice in the letter there is about... Um, $100,000 left in that account based on the letter that we sent. And there's some signage work that we're waiting to do that got caught up in the supply chain. But within the next three to four weeks, it'll be, that'll be completed. But all the construction has been completed. Very good. Thank you. I do have um, a question for uh, Mr. Walker, and I appreciate, um, Mr. Walker, you coming today to um, entertain any questions and share your feedback around moving dollars around to um, renovate Philo Hill. And again, I'll just claim I'm trying to stay on the commissioner side instead of the school board side around this project. But um, I think that as a community, we want to invest in renovations that will yield an investment in, you know, workforce, especially in a time now where um, a lot of the schools, if they're renovating, not repair, because the dollars that's there, you probably can make the repair. And I know we went down this path of option one, two, or three when I was on the school board. Mm -hmm. And then and now, I believe that if you're going to renovate, you should renovate with workforce development, some kind of tangible outcome for our students. Um, and so I know that the superintendent has talked about a STEAM, STEM, I don't know, but I really would like to know if you have any feedback right now from the school system around renovating the school to what would it look like? How will it accommodate um, vocational interests? Yeah, absolutely. So um, this thing has taken a lot of different paths over the years, um, uh, going back um, probably three years. Um, so it started out kind of as a, at a major kind of major renovation. Um, so a lot of ADA issues on that campus that really weren't being met within the renovation piece, which started some of these other discussions about some further work that need to be done there. The programming became a big discussion, right? So um, we knew we had to do something there, different there. Um, I just to be honest with you, I mean, there are 1,500 kids that live in that residential zone that are middle school age, and 500 of them go to Philo. So we're 1,000 kids at, right? So we know where they are, but and they're overcrowding some other mm -hmm. facilities. So you, programmatic wise, you really got to look at programs and culture and climate within your buildings to get people to want to feel safe and want to come home, right? So there's a lot of discussion around that. Uh, the board originally made it a, uh, we, we talked, they talked about a performing arts and then it went to STEM. 
and it's currently being programmed as a STEAM school, which is basically a STEM school with an arts uh, component to it, right? So the STEM piece of that can go a lot of different directions. It can go aeronautical, it could go engineering, it could go computer programming, it can go a lot of different ways, and that decision hasn't been made yet from a programmatic standpoint of which thread you're gonna go down. But we do know that we are designing the building for a STEAM um, um, curriculum. And for the good of the public, STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Just th those, those are some broad focus areas. And so my concern is around if you're talking about, you know, technology or science, you know, we know aviation and aeronautics is a big thing in our state and the county has invested in um, Smith Reynolds but there are a multitude of different you know very distinct vocational pathways that the district could be more deliberate so that when you are renovating and by design you can kind of incorporate some of those assets in in the work instead of coming back later and saying oh we need dollars for this because we didn't really plan to do this until after. And so that's, you know, I just want us to be cooperating with the school system in this effort because I believe that, you know, the students there should have a premier building. But I also think that if we're going to allow reinvestment in the building, that it should be in a very purposeful way with the needs of you know workforce and, and i don't want to belabor the issue but i would ask the other commissioners to, to consider you know getting feedback from the district around how close is the district in coming to some consensus around what the renovation would what the programming will look like to make sure that the school is at full capacity with a strong program so that you know, we're not building more schools later because the community kids just don't choose to go to that school. Yeah, technology-wise, it'll be fully loaded for whatever strand we want to go down. It's the software piece that you have to go uh, as part of the instructional component that that will separate us a little bit, but uh, there's still more conversation to come on that. I don't have a clear-cut path for you right now other than the STEAM, but I do know that there are conversations being had about what that looks like. Uh, further questions? Thank you, Daryl, for welcome. being here. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Did Don, Dr. Martin back? Yeah, I believe he actually was trying to get his volume squared away, so he, he came, went out and came back in, probably in the process of coming back in right now. And we wait. The vote was six one, but the one was not a negative vote. Okay. All right, very good. Uh, agenda item seven is a resolution approving the, sub the community based juvenile delinquency, substance abuse, and gang prevention plan for fiscal year 23 24 and authorizing the submission for state approval and implementation. That's actually the plan we submit to the state. And if I did my math correctly, I think there were 11 programs recommended for funding. Is there a, is there a motion? Move approval. Move to approve by Commissioner Plyler. Second. Second by Commissioner Bessie. Their discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Very good. Uh, we have Madam Vice Chair, if I may, you, you may want to allow um, the chair to vote on the past motion, the prior one. Okay. Uh, Dr. Martin, could you vote on? Uh, item six. Could you raise your hand, please? <laughs> okay. Is you, uh, item six is unanimous. Thank you. Thanks, Gordon. 
Court. Agenda item eight is for resolution authorizing execution of the necessary documents to apply for and accept if awarded a grant from the Glaxo Smith Klein Foundation and the North Carolina Public Health Association. It's a $10,000 grant. There'll be a program in the local schools uh, related to tattoo.edu programs, and it's uh, it basically is to educate teenagers about uh, health risks associated with tattoos. Move approval. The motion by Commissioner Plyler. Second. Second by Commissioner Bessie. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, that's unanimous. All right. We have several contractual matters. Uh, item nine it has four parts, but it's a resolution ratifying and authorizing execution of interlocal agreements between, between Forsyth County and communities that uh, have pl community policing services through the Sheriff's Department, and that's the Village of Clemens, the Town of Louisville, the Town of Rule Hall, and the Town of Walkertown, and those, uh, you know, those contracts are a little bit differently based on how many services each community wants to provide, but one action would, pr would approve all four contracts. Move approval. Motion to approve by Commissioner Plyler. Second. Second by Commissioner Bessie. Is there a discussion? Not. All those in favor say aye. 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 That is a unanimous vote. All right. Agenda item 10 is a resolution ratifying and authorizing execution of an interlocal agreement between Forsyth County and the Winston-Salem Forsyth County Board of Education for the provision of school resource officer deputy services. This is 39 SRO positions. It pretty much is the same level of service provided in previous years. Um, from our budget uh, and management staff, uh, particularly Ms. Bussey, provided a pretty detailed um, analysis of, of how those cost increases and what the source of those cost increases were to the school system. And, and just a reminder for the new uh, for the new board members, um, the, the accounting is a little bit complicated because the funds are essentially for these services are part of the uh, allocation to the what's Center for Scythe County School Board. Um, and then, um, so there is essentially an expenditure over there. It shows back as a, up as a revenue in the sheriff's department, and then an associated expenditure in the sheriff's department. And essentially, that provides that um, the schools are the uh, lead in developing the level of service, and essentially negotiating those contracts uh, so that they are simply the customer. Move approval. Motion to approve by Commissioner Plyler. Second. Second by Commissioner Bessie. Is there discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Thank you. All right. Item 11 is a resolution awarding a contract to PNG Security Guard Incorporated. They're doing business as PNG Security for contract to private security services at the Forsyth County Law Enforcement Detention Center. Uh, this is a contract really designed around improving safety in that facility, particularly given the staffing. Uh, issues that we have. It's a contract not to exceed $2,829,914.64. Um, um, it is one of those contracts that we have to fairly carefully monitor because we have um, essentially, we're essentially funding it using salary savings. Um, and so the idea is that as staffing improves, we'll be able to uh, reduce our reliance on that particular contract. Move approval. Motion to approve by Commissioner Plyler. Second. Second by Commissioner Bessie. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 That's aye. unanimous. Thank you. Right. Sounds like we did get volume back for Commissioner McDaniel. I don't know if, Commissioner Martin, do we have uh, audio on your side yet? I don't think, I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. For the first time, we just could. So, um, so we do have audio oh, now. Could? That's right. Right. Very good. Okay, thank you. Uh, agenda item 12 is a resolution authorizing execution of agreement between Forsyth County and the Wake Forest University Health Sciences for medical direction services for emergency medical services. Uh, this is a two-year agreement not to exceed $284,806 and essentially provides medical direction to EMS um, but also has the benefit of the fellows that work under our medical director as assistant medical director. Move approval. Motion to approve by Commissioner Plyler and second by Commissioner Bessie. Is there a discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. That's unanimous. All right. Agenda item 13 is a resolution authorizing a term extension on the agreement between Forsyth County and Seth 
Pometer, if I say that right, doing business as motivated metal, essentially extends, this is a public art project that the board approved, um, and it would extend the deadline for that to November 30th. Move approval. Motion by Commissioner Plyler. Second, it's not a dandy one. <laughs> Second by Commissioner Bessie. Discussion other than the dandelion. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. All right, very good. Uh, item 14 is a resolution awarding a contract to I.O. Long Construction Company Incorporated for renovation of the Smith Reynolds Airport Terminal Renovation Project. The project has been in under consideration for quite some time, and a lot of work has been done on that. Um, this would um, this would award the contract to L. Long for eleven million one hundred fifty three thousand um, dollars, and it uh, they were the the lowest uh, uh, responsible responsive bidder uh, on this project, and we're eager to do a groundbreaking here before too long and get that project started. Move approval. Motion to approve by Commissioner Plyler. Second. Second by Commissioner Second. Bessie. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you. All right. And it's just something to be thinking about when you walk in that, when they do the final um, uh, ribbon cutting on it, there's going to be an airplane hanging from the ceiling, if you remember. So uh, just be be prepared for that. Which so. one of the commissioners is going to be in the airplane? Uh, we do, <laughs> we'll let, let y'all decide that. But Move don't. approval. Very good. All right, item 15 is a resolution authorizing the execution of a contract to provide mortgage-style foreclosure legal services. Um, this is a contract with Mark D. Bardell. It's doing business as Zakia Legal Services, and this is a three-year agreement not to exceed $1,190,000. Move approval. Motion to approve by Commissioner Plowler. Second. Second by Commissioner Limbo. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. All right. Um, you have a number of property matters. Um, uh, three of these are with Daymark Recovery Services Incorporated for property located at 650 Island Avenue. That's items 16, 17, and 18. Uh, unless the attorney tells me something different, probably can take all those um, together. Uh, item 16 uh, would lease... Um, uh, 10,744 square feet. Uh, item 17 would lease 710, and then item 18 would lease 1,222. They really do facilitate a lot of the construction that's going to be um, underway in that facility. And they are at that lease rate, which is essentially the cost recovery lease rate we have uh, for behavioral health um, services where um, they're providing a service that we're also funding. And so um, rather than charge them a market rate rent, it, we, we charge that cost recovery rent uh, for those because we're actually funding part of the, uh, the increase. So part of the county in-kind support to that is, um, you know, is, uh, is part of that lease rate. Um, so anyway, I think you can take 16, 17, 18 together. Move approval of items 16 through 18. Motion to approve by Commissioner Plyler. Second. Second by Commissioner Bessie. Is there a discussion? Not all those in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Okay, item 19 is a resolution authorizing the execution of a lease agreement between Forsyth County and Wake Forest University Health Sciences for lease of county owned property. <clears throat> excuse me, located at 3325 Silas Creek Parkway. Um, that is the old Amos Cottage uh, program that is there uh, really adjacent almost to the emergency room there at um, uh, Forsyth Medical Center's um, complex. This is a nominal lease rate. It essentially extends the long-term agreement that we've had there as they have given us indication that they exit, they are exiting that long-term agreement. This is just a period of time for them to get out uh, for us to do an assessment of the uh, facility and also make a determination if that is really surplus property to the county or if it's um, if we have a need. So we've got some work to do on that, but but it'll essentially extend that. And this is for this is unchanged it, uh, as it as it was originally put in. I think this is a, a one year lease with a six month move uh, approval. Extension. Motion to approve by Commissioner Plyler. Second. Second by Commissioner Limville. Is there a discussion? All those in favor? I, I, I'm I, can sorry. you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Um, I, I, I actually, I, I, I think the decision on what to do with that property can be made in less than a year. Because if I understand it, there's a chance that Atrium may be using, continuing that program itself. And if they are, 
I think that the, that the cost, there, it's not a nominal lease anymore where it becomes a normal lease. And I think that decision could be made in less time than a full year. I, I, I'm in favor of continuing, but I, I'm not in favor of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the whole year deal on that. I think it needs to be something more like 90 days to 180 days. Yeah, I know Kirby may be able to respond to it a little bit. Essentially, they are constructing a facility uh, to house some of these. But before I say too much, I better turn it over to Kirby. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Chairman Morton, I, I appreciate the, the, the question and the comment. I, I think our proposal was actually based on uh, the amount of time it would take Atrium to renovate alternate locations for the Amos Cottage programs. Uh, that are in the facility. The disposition analysis that we could go through, obviously, yes, sir, it could be done in less than a year. Uh, but Atrium, of course, has actually been insisted on a two-year agreement based on their construction schedule and alternate locations. So I think you very well will see an extension request uh, from them over the next year to really go out uh, another six months beyond 18 months. Yeah, and at that point, we would certainly know. Well, I, I guess. I guess. I, I guess my thinking is then they should they should simply be paying for it what the lease rate should be. Uh, the arrangement we just got to approving several contracts with them where we're paying full 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 amount for all sorts of issues. If they're going to use that facility, the nonprofit no longer exists. Then I think they need to be paying for it while they're renovating. That's kind of the cost of doing business. Well, I, I don't disagree with you, uh, Commissioner Martin. Um, could we have further discussion on this and vote later, or is it? M Madam Vice Chair, just, just as a point of clarification, the way the proposed agreement is written, uh, Baptist would be able to be in that property for a year, and then both parties would have to agree to an additional six months. Okay. Does, is that helpful, Commissioner Martin? Um, not a lot because because a year's lease in the building is a year's lease, and I, I mean we're, I, we we've had some discussions in the last several months about basically the business relationships. We're paying for services, and I think they're paying that we have something that they're using of ours. And I think they ought to be paying. Um, is there further discussion from the board on this subject? Ed. Yes, Commissioner Bessie. As I recall, the the current lease expires at the end of this month, June. So we kind of need to make a decision one way or another today. So otherwise, you know, I'd, I'd say, why don't we postpone and have further discussion? Um, so, I mean, unless there were a substitute motion to do it, to offer a 90-day uh, extension in during which there'd be further discussions. And, and that, that very well I, could I, I, be. I'd be happy to make that substitute motion that we consider a 90-day extension at the current terms um, with a decision we made in 90 days on the appropriate uh, um, lease. I would second that motion. Um, we have a motion and a second um, that we extend the lease for 90 days at this point. Is that correct? Yes. So, Madam Vice Chair, just to clarify, um, that is the correct motion that is um, before you. So, if you you would need to vote on that motion, that would amend the original motion. Mm -hmm. And if that passes, then you would need to vote as to whether you want a 90-day lease. Okay. I, I'm confused. <laughs> I can, uh, well, can I can. Have, it's, it's a parliamentary procedure issue. Um, a, a substitute motion technically uh, is on whether or not you substitute the the suggestion for the original motion, and then that becomes the main motion. Uh, and if if the substitute passed, you're probably going to pass. The, but you, but you have to take the second vote. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's, I, it's I knew just about substitute, but yeah. Okay. okay. Procedural. Okay. Um, so would it make it any easier if the original motion was withdrawn I oh. i'll withdraw the second mm -hmm. if that makes it any simpler does it mr attorney i i think you can go ahead and vote on what you have before you it, it'll as, as uh it was uh 
described better by Commissioner Bessie than I described, but what he said was absolutely correct. <laughs> okay, we're going to vote on the substitute, substitute motion. Other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> That's unanimous. Oh, I was going to say no. Oh, I'm sorry. It's six to one with Commissioner Woodbury voting in opposition. So now we vote on the, the main motion. Now we will vote on the main motion. Which is what we just approved. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which essentially would be the 90-day right. uh, lease extension, which would give us, uh, Kirby can go back and, and, um, and really talk. And I think what I'm hearing the board say is that you really want to talk about some remuneration in this, uh, in, in, in the, Right. in this part of it and so we'll have some marching orders to go back and and um and figure out what that um what that might be which will be a little bit complicated because you know that that property's been under a um uh under a, a a long term lease for a long long period of time and so you know understanding what um what some of the holding costs of that are and how you factor in what a lease rate and all that is it sounds like we're talking about a triple net type of lease where we would keep the holding right. costs on the tenant side and we're looking at a rate for right. the use of the land and the facility yeah what we were what at, at the staff level as this was originally kind of discussed it was it was they've had it for a long period of time there is the open question about what activities are in there are enterprise activities for the medical center and what were um more um uh, philanthropic activities that were being conducted in that. My suspicion is the board really does care about uh, what philanthropic activities might have been in there versus what are really enterprise activities. And so we will go back and, and, and understand that better and um, uh, and try to, try to bring that back to you. So. Okay, group, we're going to vote. I'd like to, I'd like to make a motion. We approve the amended motion. Yeah, it's on the floor. Sorry, on the floor. It's already on the floor, Dr. Martin. Yeah. We're going to we're going to vote on we're the motion. Vote. Pardon? Okay. 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 We're voting on the motion to extend the lease ninety days. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those. Aye. Aye. Any opposition? No. Um, I was waiting for the discussion part for this. Oh. Sorry, I just wanted to, I think, put on record that I think we're kind of um, delaying the inevitable and kicking this down the kicking the can down the road a little longer. And you know, I just like to try to be supportive of the direction that staff bring to us to to be more concise. Um, but I understand, you know, the careful review of this um, commission. But I just wanted to make record that I, I appreciate and I'm sure we I know we all do the, the work of staff and I just want to make sure that we are you know empowering staff to bring these decisions so that things could get done in a con convenient way for our community but thank you you're welcome that motion was approved six to one with Commissioner Woodbury voting in opposition Very good. Uh, agenda item 20 is a resolution declaring certain county motor vehicles and equipment surplus property and authorizing their sale. Uh, essentially would, would sell these vehicles at an auction to be held um, August 12th through the 23rd. It has an online component and a, um, uh, in, uh, in an active law auction period component. Uh, and it's Rogers Realty and Auction Services. Move approval. Second. Motion to approve by Commissioner Plyler and a second by Commissioner Bessie. Discussion? All those in, pro in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. All right. And there are a bunch of appointments, and your normal appointment reader is you. <laughs> so you've got the double duty, Madam Chair. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I can handle that if you like. Well, go ahead. That would be great. <laughs> um, I, I've been I've been tapped in as the substitute reader of. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Go for it. <laughs> Do we want to take them all? Take well, take them one at a time. Mm -hmm. okay. Please. Uh, all right. The the first one's twenty one. It's sixteen appointments of the Adult Care Home Community Advisory Committee. Um, there are ten open slots available and six administrator slots available. Uh, two. Uh, 
citizens applied for open spots, they can they can be appointed at once, and uh, we can continue the remaining um, uh, 14 appointments for consideration in the next round of appointments, and I so move. I have a motion to appoint these folks by acclamation. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Woodbury. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Um, the animal services, it's 22 to six appointments, animal services advisory uh, board. Um, uh, there was one appointment available for the acting chairman, president of the Forsyth County Veterinarian Association. There were no applicants. Uh, so this automatically, I think, gets continued to a future meeting. And a motion? Yes. Second. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Commissioner Bessie and a second by Commissioner Plyler. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Um, 23. Two I'm so sorry. No. Uh, there was, um, there was we're still on animal services, uh, and th these are the, the two at-large seats. Uh, there are two applicants, and they can be appointed together by application as they move. Um, a motion by Commissioner Bissey. Second. Second by Commissioner Plyler. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Two unanimous. Uh, and finally, Animal Services Advisory Board, um, uh, there is one appointment of, available for the owner of an animal other than a dog or cat. There are two applicants. Uh, we only have one seat, and so this one we need to do a, a vote. A vote. Um, uh, may I ask, Madam Chair, uh, is this normally a written vote? It is a written vote, and you have to sign your name. You check which one you want. You so can then, vote for one. Then we, we turn that in. Yes, and the manager will pick that up. Just just <laughs> as a clarification, uh, Commissioner Bessie, this, this is a written vote, and in the minutes it, it does indicate who voted for which candidate. Okay, very good. Vice Chair Christina Griffin received unanimous vote. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And one final under Animal Services Advisory Board, there is available one appointment uh, for a two-year term for an officer in the Forsyth County Animal Welfare Organization. There were no applicants, so this would need to be continued to a future meeting, and I would so move. Um, a motion by Commissioner Bessie, a second by, I'll second the motion. And we'll continue this to a future meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. And one, I'm sorry, one more on Animal Service Advisory Board. Uh, one appointment for uh, reserved for owner of a fertile hunting dog. Uh, and uh, there is an incumbent uh, wishing to serve. Um, uh, can be appointed by acclamation. And I say move. Uh, is that a motion? Yes, ma'am. Uh, have a motion by Commissioner Bessie. A second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 That's, aye. that's unanimous. Now we can finally get to 23. <laughs> uh, two appointments are available to the Community Appearance Commission, Winston-Salem, Forsyth County. Um, uh, these are uh, limited to. Um, those with special experience or education in design, there were no qualified applicants, and therefore I move that be continued to a future meeting. Motion by Commissioner Bessie. A second. A second by Commissioner Plyler. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Um, uh, item 24, eight appointments available to the Community Child Protection Team Child Fatality Prevention Team. Eight appointments were available. There were no applicants. I move that this be continued to a future meeting for consideration. Have a motion by Commissioner Bessie. Second. Second by Commissioner Plyler. I would like to say that I do believe this um, committee is a very important committee, and I'm 
saddened that we did not have any appointment or applications and hopefully in the future we can advertise this in a different manner. All those in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Um, I'm 25 three appointments to the Environmental Assistance and Protection Board. Uh, there are three appointments available. Um, these are open uh, and there are three incumbents wishing to be served. They can be Pointed by acclamation, and I so move. Motion by Commissioner Bessie. Second. Second by Commissioner Plyler. All those in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Aye. Um, there is one appointment, item 26, uh, available to the Equalization and Review Board. Uh, there's one open seat. Um, two citizens have applied, and therefore this needs to be uh, uh, by the written ballot. Madam, you Madam can, Chair, is it appropriate for us to have any comments regarding any of these um, citizens wishing to serve, or we just make the silent vote? Everyone just does their own choice, and okay. you can vote for one. Vice Chair Mustafa Shabazz received majority vote. Thank you. And Madam Chair, it's been, been called to my attention that uh, I should have been calling individuals' names for their information with, uh, may I go back and- No, 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 that's no? Fine. okay. <laughs> All right. The, the clerk will notify those folks that they were appointed. Thank you. Um, there are two appointments available to the Forsyth County Historic Resources Commission. One of those uh, is uh, restricted to the owner of a local historic landmark property. There were no applicants to, for that seat, uh, and uh, therefore I move that that be continued to a future meeting. Motion by Commissioner Bessie. Second. Second by Commissioner Plyler. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Um, and now there is one at-large seat uh, available for appointment. There are six citizens wishing to serve, so this is a balloting yes. question. Mm -hmm. um, is that a motion to? Yes, ma'am. So, so moved. Motion by Commissioner Bessie. Second. Second by Commissioner Plow. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Aye. Aye. Vice Chair Shanita Johnson received majority vote. Thank you. There, item 28, um, three appointments are available for Scythe County Home and Community Care Block Grant Advisory Council. There were no applicants, uh, therefore move that that be continued to a future meeting. Motion by Commissioner Bessie. Second. Second by Commissioner Plyler. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Uh, item 29 is 17 appointments to the Forsyth County Juvenile Crime Prevention Council fortuitously. Um, that uh, there are a number of applicants um, matching up with available seats. Therefore, I move... Um, appointment uh, to at-large seats 
uh, Denise Hartsfield, Al Wadud Jabbar, Jack Manel, Cynthia Collins, Lori Edwards, Shatara Smith, and Clinton Wilson uh, for a local parks uh, situation. Fua Martin, and that's P H O U A, if I mispronounced your name, my apologies. And appointment to a seat representing the district attorney, Andrew Kiever. Um, I move approval of all those appointments. Second. Mo motion by Commissioner Bessie, second by Commissioner Plyler. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And there are several, uh, several seats available, and I move that those be. Um, uh, continued for, for future consideration. Second. That's a motion by Commissioner Bessie and second by Commissioner Plyler. The first motion was unanimous. All in favor of this motion to uh, continue aye. the appointment say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you. Um, there is one appointment to the Forsyth Technical Community College Board of Trustees uh, available. Um, there are four applicants for that position, I believe. Yes. Commissioner Bessie, if I could, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we continue uh, the Forsyth Tech Community College until our next meeting um, for us to have a, a, a policy question answered if we want to make this an appointment uh, for one of the county commissioners or if we want to make it an appointment for a community. Uh, resident. So I would ask that we uh, continue this until our next meeting. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Woodbury. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Item number 31. Um, there are four appointments available to the Industrial Facilities and Pollution Control Financing Authority. Uh, there is one applicant, um, Ms. Shatara Smith, um, and therefore I would move appointment of Ms. Smith to one of these uh, four appointments and the continuance of the continuation of the remaining appointments. To Second. Motion by Commissioner Bessie, second by Commissioner Parla. <coughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Um, item 32, one appointment to the jury commission. Uh, there is one seat available, one uh, applicant, Ms. Tasha Wilson. I uh, move approval of Ms. Wilson as the appointee. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bessie. Second. Second by Commissioner Plyler. A second by Commissioner Plyler and Commissioner McDaniel. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. aye. That's unanimous. Uh, item 33 is two appointments to the library board. Uh, there are two open seats and there are two applicants. Uh, Ms. Peggy Light and Ms. Donna Staley. I move approval of Ms. Light and Ms. Staley. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bessie. Second by Commissioner Plyler. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Item 34, there are 12 appointments available to the Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee for Forsyth County. Um, uh, there are 12 appointments available. There is one applicant um, for one of the eight open slots, uh, Ms. Debbie Kornitzer. Uh, I move approval of Ms. Kornitzer's appointment uh, and to, to continue the remaining appointment slots, four administrators positions and seven open slots to a future meeting. A second. Uh -huh. Motion by Commissioner Bessie, second by Commissioner Plyler. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Uh, the Piedmont Triad um, Airport Authority, there's one appointment available. There is one applicant, uh, Mr. Graham Bennett. I move approval of Mr. Bennett's appointment to this seat. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bessie, second by Commissioner Plowler. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. 
Aye. That's unanimous. Item 36, there are nine appointments available to Piedmont Triad Regional Workforce Development Board. Um, there are three applicants, uh, Mr. Alvin Warwick for organized labor-based seat, uh, Ms. Sherry Carpenter for community-based uh, seat, uh, and Ms. Beverly Frey for the Wagner Pizer seat. Um, I move appointment approval of uh, Mr. Warwick, Ms. Carpenter, and Ms. Frey uh, to the designated seats and the continuance of the remaining seats for future consideration. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bessie and second by Commissioner Plyler. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you. Item 37, there is one appointment available to the City County Planning Board. Um, there are two applicants. Uh, I move that this be handled by ballot. I have a motion by Commissioner Bessie. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Yeah, that's it. That's what I just set myself up for success, Mr. Watts. <laughs> You're doing good. Vice Chair Shannon Stanley received unanimous vote. Thank you. Item 38, there is one appointment available to the Utility Commission. This is an open seat with a joint appointment with the City of Winston-Salem. There is one applicant, uh, Lindsay Schwab. Uh, I move approval of uh, applicant Schwab. That's the planning board. I'm sorry, planning board. Planning board. A second. A second. A uh, motion by Commissioner Bessie, second by Commissioner Plowler. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the correction. That's fine. Jumping ahead there. All right, now we're at the Utilities Commission. Um, one appointment available uh, and one applicant. Um, uh, I move uh, the uh, approval of uh, Hugh Jernigan for appointment to this uh, Utilities Commission seat. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bessie, second by Commissioner Plowler. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. That's unanimous. All right. Let me double check. Yeah. All right. We have one appointment available to the Winston Salem Forsyth County Schools Education Foundation. Uh, there is one applicant. I move approval of Neil Tackaberry to this seat. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bessie. Second by Commissioner Plowler. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, that's six with uh, Commissioner Woodbury out of the room. Item 40, four appointments to the Zoning Board of Adjustment for Forsyth County. Um, there were no applicants. I move that this matter be continued to a future meeting. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bessie, second by Commissioner Plyler. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Six in favor. I'm 41. Um, one appointment to the Zoning Board of Adjustment for Kernersville. Uh, there is one seat available uh, for a member who resides outside the town limits of Kernersville. One applicant. Uh, I move the uh, approval of the appointment to Suzanne Meyer to this seat. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bessie, second by Commissioner Plyler. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That is approved by six members. And there was, a, I believe, a misplaced cheat sheet here. Um, all right. Here we get to the... Uh, Zoning Board of Item 42, the Zoning Board of Adjustment for 
Winston-Salem, yeah. Winston-Salem, and uh, apologies, but I cannot find that sheet. There were, there were no applicants. There were no. Yeah, no applicants. Yeah, so sure. I've moved that this item be continued to a future meeting. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bessie, second by Pl Commissioner Plyler. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Bessie. Very good. That was pretty impressive, uh, actually. <laughs> that was so impressive. You just yeah. got a point if you didn't know it. That's right. Very good. All right. Last item is just a tax administration item. It's a resolution approving refunds by the tax assessor to collect in the amount of $14,545.22. And that was from the North Carolina Vehicle Tax System. Move approval. Motion to approve by Commissioner Plyler. Second. Second by Commissioner Limville. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous. All right. Um, could I say one thing before we adjourn? I know it appeared that we went, other than the appointments and um, the items on the agenda, it appeared that we rushed through them and they were all unanimous except maybe one. But we have two briefings and we discuss each item two times very thoroughly before we vote on them. I just did not want the public to think that we just sit here and rubber stamp everything. So thank you. And that is it, Madam Chair. So we just okay. have the briefing. Um, I have a motion that we can adjourn and take a 10 minute break. A move. That's a motion by Commissioner Bessie. Second. Second by Commissioner Plyler. All in favor say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you.
We're back in our meeting waiting for our county manager. We're going to go over our briefing. Our briefing today is for our meeting of July 27th, 2023, and he is arriving as I speak. So I'll turn the meeting over to our manager. All right. Very good. Let me get my ducks in a row here for a second. All right. Do I need to say anything or y'all? Y'all got it? Okay, so we are briefing for the um, July is going to be a little strange, so we're going to be briefing for the July 27th meeting. Um, uh, obviously, the meeting schedule has us not meeting next Thursday, has us meeting on the 13th, not meeting on the 20th, and meeting on the 27th. So um, our deadline for the items on this agenda are actually technically tomorrow. Um, so as we go through the the items that we have in place, I reached out to the department and said, if you expect anything, let me know and I'll mention it. But as we always have done, we'll get the public hearing matters um, kind of fully briefed and then I'll run through the rest of the items. And then the other, only other item we have today is just that closed session item. Yes. Yes. So very good. So Chris. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, I do have three text amendments before you. Uh, one is truly a UDO CC 23, which is the last one I'll go over today, is titled non-substantive changes, but I believe in looking at all three of them, they're, all three of these, they're relatively minor compared to some of the ones we've had recently. Uh, the first uh, text amendment is UDO CC 21. It's a proposal by Planning and Development Services staff to amend sections 3 and 11 of the UDO to ensure consistency and application of site triangle provisions throughout all of Forsyth County. In 2021, the North Carolina legislature adopted new language specifying that measurements for site distances at intersections, uh, including site triangles, must begin within the right-of-way or edge of pavement for municipalities. Um, prior to adoption of this language, municipalities could do site triangles through various methods. Um, and the current UDO definition, which is a city-only definition, by the way, uh, for site triangles states that site triangles shall be measured uh, starting at the edge of the right-of-way or actually on the private property. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, this definition, again, is currently city-specific, uh, but site triangles are consistently requested by NCDOT through the review process throughout Forsyth County. Uh, this proposal definition of site triangles to state that the measurement begins at the edge of pavement. It will convert the definition from a city only definition to a county wide definition and it will replace the existing graphic in the UDO. Uh, the image on the right is not the existing graphic that's in the UDO, uh, but it is how we currently um, do measure site distance triangles. Uh, they're at the uh, edge of the right of way, but on the property line of the um, property in question. The state statute measurement uh, or requirement is what is shown on the right, uh, which shows that uh, 10 by 70 site triangle easement being within the right of way at the edge of pavement. Uh, the state adopted this language um, again back in 2021. Uh, the proposed amendment will amend the current definition to meet the state statute requirement, and the amendment will have no impact on the current review as staff has already incorporated this into our review process. Uh, this was heard by the planning board at the February 9th, 2023 public hearing. There were no speakers in opposition, and the planning board did vote unanimously to recommend approval of this request, and this was adopted by city council on May 1st, 2023. With that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Questions? I did actually have a substantive question about that. Um, it appears that the new definition requires measuring this as if the vehicle had rolled up to the stop bar that would be over the sidewalk. So when a car is stopping at one of these intersections, uh, they have to move forward and block the sidewalk. Obviously, they're not on top of the sidewalk, but they're on, on it looks like they're, they have to move forward to a point where a pedestrian using the sidewalk can't proceed across the intersection while they're there. 
I, I would agree with that assessment. So is this a, a mandatory change? Uh, well, again, law? keep in mind there's nothing currently in the county regulation that even pr provides how site triangles are done. Within municipalities within Forsyth County, this is a state mandate. This is a state requirement. We felt like for the, for the ease of simplicity, for the ease of enforcement, for the ease of clarity, clarification, and explaining this to folks, it would be better to have the same definition both in the city and the county. And at some point, the statute was either changed or clarified to, in essence, require that, uh, that the, the visibility be measured from the point of view of a driver whose car is blocking passage of, of pedestrians across that intersection when there is a car stopped there. What I would say is that this was probably a property rights um, clarification in that the way the site triangle used to be, you came back from, you, you went to the edge of the right of way, or i.e. on the property, came back 10 feet and then went down the road 70 feet, which took that 10 by 70 area out of being able to put a sign or any other piece of, any other use on the property out of the equation. Um, so yes, whenever the General Assembly changed this for municipalities to make it uniform throughout the state, um, they made it where you have to do what's on the second image on the screen, which, like you say, does block, potentially block the sidewalk. Um, I would love to have that noted to our representative in, in Raleigh as a question of concern. Is that something that, I mean, that's, obviously that's not the agenda item on, but. I'll defer to the attorney on that. But <laughs> that that's certainly something we could look into. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Any, yeah. Other questions? I don't believe so, Chris. Right. The second item that I have is entitled UDO CC 22. And this is something that the city council adopted, and it's related to actually something on the last meeting that y'all uh, just had an appointment for the Historic Resources Commission. But this is basically concurrence of the change that the city has made to their appointment structure. Uh, this would amend Chapter 10 of the UDO to modify the structure of the Forsyth County Historic Resources Commission for the city appointees. Uh, the HRC is currently a 12-member board, five appointed by the county commissioners, five members appointed by the county commissioners, five members appointed by the city of Winston-Salem, and then one member each appointed by the village of Clemens and the town of Kernersville, as they are also certified local governments. Uh, currently, the city of Winston-Salem appoints one at-large member and four categorical members. Forsyth County appoints three at-large members, one member that you just appointed um, to serve a, an expired term. And then there are two categorical members that the county appoints, one being a licensed architect and one being a property owner of a local historic landmark. And that was the one that y'all just continued to the next cycle because you didn't have an applicant. Uh, the Winston-Salem categorical seats are based on, uh, there, there are two seats that are based on residence location, one within the historic um, and H district which is either within Old Salem or Bethabara, or, uh, and a historic overlay district, which is someone who lives within West End. And then there are two professional qualifications, seats, uh, an archaeologist, landscape architect, arborist, planner, or surveyor is one seat, and an architectural historian or historic preservationist being another. This change is to eliminate uh, those two um, professional qualification seats, what are indicated in yellow, and convert those from professional qualifications to at-large. So you would have three at-large and two categorical, which would be the same as what the county has. This was the, the research that we did uh, in looking at uh, what our other peer communities have. There's only one other um, unit of certified local government kind of our size in the state that has any professional categories, and that's the Durham Historic Preservation Commission. All the rest of them do, don't have any professional categories. Uh, again, this request is to change those two categorical seats to two at-large seats. Uh, those categorical seats are rooted in the 1948 
creation of uh, the Board of Architecture Review for the Old Salem Historic District, which was the precursor to the current HRC. And that was a time when the planning, uh, when the planning department didn't have any uh, professional historic preservation staff. Currently, we do have uh, two full-time staff members who are overly qualified uh, to handle these items. Uh, this, uh, this change will broaden the pool of potential AR, uh, HRC members. Again, if you, have, uh, if you have qualifications that have to be met, you're artificially shrinking the pool of potential applicants who could serve on the HRC. Uh, this Again, this uh, change will bring the HRC uh, into line with the membership structure of commissions and peer communities around the state, and it will result in the city and county having similar at-large and categorical appointment opportunities. Uh, this amendment will have no impact on current members um, in these seats as their terms expire in November of 23 and June of 26, so they'll continue to serve. And have the and can re and can reapply if they're if they haven't run their uh, maximum amount of time uh, on the HRC. Uh, the HRC uh, did recommend uh, this change after discussion at their July 2022 retreat. Uh, this change was presented to the Community Development, Housing, and General Government Committee as an information back in item back in October. After a presentation in public hearing um, for community members, no one spoke at the March 9th uh, planning board meeting, and the planning board did recommend approval of this request, and this was adopted by city council on June 5th, 2023. This is coming before you because currently the HRC regulations in, in the UDO are have both jointly been adopted by the city and the county. We could have slapped a W on this, but we just felt like it was easier just to have it have your concurrence with this. So with that, I'm glad to answer any questions. Our recommendation is for approval. Questions of Chris? Thank you, Chris. Right. Thank you. And then finally, the last item that I have today is UDO CC23, which is a uh, proposal by staff to amend chapters 3, 4, 5, 9, and 11. Uh, for miscellaneous non-substantive changes to the UDO language. I hope that you received another memo that I wrote to uh, the county manager uh, on Tuesday that um, sought to condense this even further than what the staff report did. Uh, these non-substantive changes are uh, prepared periodically to keep the UDO up to date and provide clarifications. This is actually our first up -to -date, uh, our update since we went live with UDO Clear Code back in uh, 2021, I believe. Uh, these non-substantive changes are revisions that have no effect on the intent or enforceability of standards. Revisions are proposed when staff discovers uh, un... In if you hold on one second, I can't read this. Unintentional omissions or inconsistencies within the text, often as a result of changes made in previous UDO amendments, including the transition to UDO Clear Code. Uh, there are... Two minor changes to the zoning map amendment process in Chapter 3. There's one minor change to the establishment of the NCO in Chapter 4. Uh, correcting an omission to the principal use table and revising specific standards for two uses, uh, both in Chapter 5. Uh, reserving a non-conforming subsection in Chapter 9 and then revising, I believe it's 11 different definitions in Chapter 11. Uh, the zoning uh, map amendment section in Chapter 3, uh, the neighborhood outreach summaries uh, must now include the outcomes of the meeting, not just a statement that they held a meeting, but what was discussed and if any changes were made to the plan. Uh, the requirement for a pre-application conference for the special use limited or special use no site plan district has been removed. We've actually had this in our ordinance for 15 years and had never actually met with a single applicant uh, on that because generally speaking, they're going through some type of a process with us anyway, whether it be a sketch plan review or coming in um, uh, and discussing it through, via email or a phone call. So we felt like it was time to eliminate that section. Uh, the NCO, uh, provision in chapter four. Uh, this is changed to reflect a change that was made in state law with the adoption of 160D. There's a provision that says there are, there's an ability to do a non-petitioning owner rezoning in the UDO for an NCO. But you can't propose any type of restriction that would constitute a down zoning. Most NCO provisions deal with setbacks or uh, you perhaps a build to line and those kind of things. But if you have a, 
If you have a setback and a minimum lot width that's greater than what the ordinance requires and you put those things in tandem, you could effectively be down zoning someone's property. If you have an RS9 zoning district, but your requirements that you come up with an NCO requires you to have a 20,000 square foot lot, you've essentially down zoned that property because you've gone from R, you know, from four and a half lots per acre to two lots per acre. So we wanted to go in and put this provision in there as a clear indication that if you propose changes or a number of changes that would constitute a down zoning, you have to have the signature of every property owner of record. Uh, so that's what that does. In the principal use table in chapter five, we did add a reference to the use specific standards that prohibits electronic sweepstakes operations. This is a Winston-Salem only provision, so it's, uh, again, not really applicable to the county. Also under the use specific standards and the, uh, for planned residential development, we removed the three acre minimum site size for GMAs three and four uh, to allow for some additional flexibility for infill development. And we removed the five acre minimum site size for multiple single family dwellings on the same zoning lot. And then finally on the use specific standards for the uh, buffer yard, there was a buffer yard requirement prior to us updating the UDO with a text amendment back in the late teens, uh, where we went in and changed our buffer yard standards. There used to be a 30 foot width buffer yard. There, we no longer have a 30 foot width in the ordinance. So we wanted to make the ordinance consistent with the widths of the buffer yards that we have. So we went from a 30 foot with an arbitrary planting requirement to a 20 foot that has a specified planting requirement, just like any other 20 foot type one buffer yard would have. It actually has more primary evergreens, which provides a more effective screening uh, than the arbitrary numbers that were in there. So that was a change that was made. Under private swimming pools, uh, we are removing the current fencing requirements that are in there and just basically referencing state statute because there are building code requirements for swimming pools and it shouldn't be in the UDO. Under the non-conforming provisions, again, this is a Winston-Salem only provision. Um, you remember several months ago, we changed the special use, parking, special use permit parking requirement section to remove the requirement to do that for uh, restaurants. Um, electronic sweepstakes operations had been left in there, but we don't allow electronic sweepstakes operations in the city. The county doesn't have that as a use, so we just need to reserve this section. And then finally, there are a number of definitions that um, were changed to replace unintentional emissions. Uh, there were some definitions that were in the environmental section, some definitions that were in the regular section of the UDO. Whenever we did UDO clear code, some of those got eliminated and, and or deferred to the environmental ordinance as opposed to having the um, general uh, definition in there. So that's what those changes do. A public hearing was held by the planning board on April 13th. Uh, there were no speakers in opposition or support. Following the public hearing, the planning board voted to recommend approval with a six to two vote. There were uh, two different provisions that two different planning board members uh, took issue with. Uh, but this was considered by the city council and adopted on June 5th. And with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Could you tell us the opposition, what they were opposed to? Um, one of the planning board members um, had a zoning case that was um, both potentially going to come to the commissioners that had a limited use beside of their property. And they felt like that they wanted to know if we had had this meeting. That's actually how it came to our attention that this provision was in the ordinance uh, to have this meeting. And you know, basically we communicated that you know we had never had these meetings in 15 years and felt like we needed to take it out. So that um, planning board member voted against it for that reason. And another planning board member vote, pl planning board member voted against the change to the buffer yard standard for the PRDs. And that has a long history. There was a time when we had a buffer yard requirement in PRDs, and then in the mid-2000s, we took the requirement totally out of the ordinance for the PRDs. In the early 2010s, we put it back in. So this person has long been associated with the Neighborhood Alliance, and they, had, they wanted that buffer yard standard put back in there. He felt like by changing it from 30 feet to 20 feet, we were effectively 
making a substantial change. Our argument was, yes, we're reducing the width slightly, but it's from an enforcement standpoint, and the landscaping that's going in there is actually a better buffer than what we currently have. So those were the two items that uh, of concern, and they, they, they both stated they didn't have any problems with anything else, but they, had, they each had a problem with those respective sections. Um, thank you. All right. Further questions for Chris? Thank you. Thank you. All righty. So I'll uh, do a quick review of the other items that we'll brief fully on um, July the 13th. Uh, and there's a few, the, you know, I'll review what's on the agenda and then I'll mention a few that um, that I know will, will come into us by close of business Friday. So uh, budget and finance items, you got a resolution authorizing the expenditure of opioid settlement funds. That essentially takes, um, uses opioid settlement funds to fund our FROST program, which is the public health program around um, uh, addressing the opioid issues in the community. Um, and they've been a real leader in that. So you'll hear from Denise on that. Um, you got a couple of contracts. You got a contract with uh, Striker Sales LLC, um, essentially a maintenance agreement on the two pieces of equipment that EMS carries um, kind of across the system, the life pack monitor defibrillators, absolutely essential piece of equipment, and the Lucas chest compression devices, which is a fairly new device that we've got uh, on the ambulances. So if you want us to bring in and show you a demo, we can certainly uh, do that, but this is the maintenance service agreement for that. Um, you've got a resolution on the, for temporary employment for one-stop early voting. Um, every year the, um, the uh, elections office uh, receives bids. We receive bids this year using the, um, uh, the informal process since we're not required to use a formal process through that. And so we've gotten really good competitive pricing on that. And so Tim will bring that to you. Um, this meeting cycle is where uh, John will do the um, annual settlement and also the order to collect for taxes. And so um, John usually goes through a pretty exhaustive um, presentation of what collection efforts look like, um, how that, uh, you know, how they do that, and how we try to work with citizens in those issues. So you'll hear uh, directly from John on that. My recollection is we were debating about when to do the detailed part of that. And so um, I think we landed on the 13th. So when we're back in here the next Thursday, uh, two Thursdays from now, he'll, you'll, you'll hear that presentation. Um, so it looks like a pretty light agenda. We I know we're going to receive a couple of other items. One of them is um, we've got an opportunity to apply for some Golden Leaf grant money. I think they really want to see an application that bubbles up out of the county because Ted Lord actually called me and said, make sure you're applying this cycle. Um, so we're in the process of, of evaluating process projects. They are looking for innovative projects. And so um, we're trying to meet all the deadlines for submission to that um, within our meeting schedule. And so we'll work, uh, that'll either be a discussion item or it'll be an agenda action item, depending on how we, how much progress we can make with that. There are two public health grant matters, both um, related to infant mortality uh, responses and, and those kinds of things. And so uh, public health's working on that. And then um, there's also gonna be a request to use some behavioral health uh, dollars for the Sturmer House improvements. That's where we're trying to set up that um, uh, that crisis facility for youth uh, in crisis to give us some a buffer and, and help us try to deal better with uh, the difficulty that we're having trying to find placements for some of those youth. And so, so that's what we have right now. We're gonna have to be a little flexible going through the next, um, uh, next couple of Thursdays just because of the meeting cycle, but um, uh, that's what we're working on right now. Could, could I ask uh, Chantel, are you still having trouble from the state on that Sturmer House uh, getting their approval? Unfortunately, Vice Chair Wisenhunt, um, we submitted, as you know, the request in April 2022, so over a year now, and we have not received the approval. Um, it sat at DHHS for over a year, obviously, I've reached out to um, Secretary Kinsley as well as I know you've talked to legislators and Chair Martin. Um, at this point, they're saying it's sitting at the centers um, for Medicaid um, at the federal government level. Um, but my concern is they did not submit it to the federal government um, until recently. So. Um, uh, Ms. Price and I have been working with partners on some other potential options because it does not seem like we're going to be able to rely on the state. Thank you. That's a shame. Yes, ma'am. The last item, unless there's anything else from board members, is just the closed session motion. 
Anything else? You have that motion. I do. I need to ask the board to consider a motion to go into closed session and discuss three matters to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, conditions of appointment, or conditions of initial employment of an individual public <laughs> officer or employee or prospective public officer or employees pursuant to Federal General Statute 143-1311-A6. Since there's no other business to come before the board at this meeting, following the closed session, the meeting will be adjourned. Okay. Is there a motion? So move. Motion. Motion by Commissioner Bessie and second by Commissioner Plyler. For the first time today, uh, <laughs> all in favor say aye. Aye. We Madam, are adjourned. Madam Chair, oh, I'm sorry. I got some information for the manager. Oh, okay. Please go. <laughs> he may already know about it. I told you that I would keep you posted all the time that I knew anything about new electric stuff. And rolling stock and whatever it might be. Well, you may have seen it. Today's the first time I saw this, that Mack Truck has come out with electric truck, a medium-duty truck, and that might uh, fit something that you would want to use. So I just wanted to make you aware of it. I don't want to take a chance on you missing something, which you very seldom do, and I don't remember whether they reported to you a while back that um, and I didn't know that either till I was reading about electric stuff and Cummins engine. They've been working on something too. So, are you talking about an eight-wheeler? <laughs> well, the me medium duty I don't believe is a uh, eighteen-wheeler, uh, but they are uh, the companies are working toward that, and I think they're actually. Uh, is some they work in the wards it they're just going to be things of work in special uh applications yeah um scott and some of his staff went out and uh did a demo of um uh it's first time kind of the, there's been a big push commercially with uh with with lawn equipment and what have you they did a demo uh i think yesterday on um on sort of the the uh, on the electric equipment that's out there uh, to to do lawn work, so we'll see. Be coming. That's all I want. I just want to keep you posted. That's great. Thank you, Vice Chair Wisdom. Before we um, go into close, I just wanted to. Um, I hope I don't embarrass one of our workers, but um, one of the workers in this building didn't have a clue of who I was, and he works in general service. I think his last name is Imes. He says he does building assessment. And he was so helpful. Um, and I, you know, decided, well, I'll have a conversation with him. And just so happy he graduated from Carver High School. So, you know, now he's like probably my favorite yeah. government employee. But I just wanted to let you know that um, that is a lost art in a lot of times institutions that just regular employees making sure that when they see citizens, how can we help you? Are you lost? And just being concerned. So I just, you know, wanted to thank you for your leadership in how our employees, um, you know, interact with citizens. Yeah, it's really a culture, but we are, I, I'm not surprised because we have a ton of folks like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, everybody who shows up gets to see Miss Bernice down there and she's going to help you get to the right place. And I think from there, it just, it's, it, it's infectious at some point in time. And so thank you, but we'll pass that along. That's great. Yeah. Other comments? Um, we have not voted on the motion. All in favor of the motion to adjourn and go into closed session, say aye. 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 That's unanimous. We are adjourned.